Shalom and welcome to our 20th annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part 7 of Preparing for Rulership.
Psalm 23. To us, a child is born. Born. Already mentioned. Some child is to come into the world that was not in the world, but to come into the world as a child. And what kind of child is he? Unto us. Unto us, a son is given. Man child. All right. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So we're talking about a child, a man child to be born, who is to become the Mighty God. Born of a woman, to become the mighty God. Now, as long as he looked like this, we never had a problem with that idea. Never. No question. To say that he was born of a woman and become the mighty God, no problem. Why is that problem now? A moment ago, color made no difference. In fact, we didn't consider color just a moment ago. That's the same color. Why don't you know who this is? Now, if you have a, if color didn't make any difference a moment ago, then you have to be quiet now. Oh, hallelujah, already. Now you have to make a choice. Who do you want for your God? Somebody you've never seen, you never will see, or someone that's here with you now that can answer your prayer, solve your problem. Right. 
now. To see this one, you have to die. To see this one, you have to be alive. <laughs> and the book says, true and living God. So now that I'm here and look like you, you should be happy. Boy, oh, you mean the mighty God look like me? Now, before you can make a judgment about me being the mighty God, I don't care whether you believe it or disbelieve it, you have to make the same judgment. You have to use your intelligence to do the same thing, whether you believe it or don't believe it. And that is, you have to ask some very serious questions. You see, if, if I am not the mighty God, you can say, oh, I can keep waiting. I don't have to straighten up now. If I'm not the mighty God, just think how wonderful that is. You don't have to worry yet. But everybody on earth that believes in God tells you he's coming one day. Problem you've had is knowing what it looks like. So let's take our John 3, 2 and take a look at him for a minute. And let's see if we can get an idea of what it looks like. If I'm not the mighty God, no problem. Oh, but what about the fact that I am? If you reject me, guess who's got a problem? If I am, and you reject me, who has a problem? You do. I got three, two. Ready? Beloved, now are we the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, so you're like me, and you can see me as I am. That takes a little mystery. Isn't that wonderful? Please turn to side two. Now, whatever happens in your life, remember not only am I the mighty God, but I am wonderful. I'm the good shepherd and the good man. And I care about my sheep. And I'll look out for you. And if you think there's a time of trouble, I'll step in and open up my arms and come to counsel you. I'm the wonderful counselor. And I'm here to comfort you and make everything all right. The word said I would be able to do it. And I'm the only man that can take the pain away. I don't have to pray to nobody else. And you don't have to pray to nobody else to take the pain away. Isaiah 45, 5. I am Yahweh. And there is none else. And there is no God beside me. You are never going to see a God beside me. I'm the only God you are ever going to see. I am He. But the world claimed to be looking for, I dare to be, took care of you. Though you have not known me, I'm the one that has been guiding your path all your life, through every downfall and every deep and troubled period. I'm the one. You may not have known me, but I'm still the one. Before I took on this body, I was still the one taking care of you. No one can speak with authority as I am. 
No one can speak without question as I speak. I speak with authority that I am Yahweh. My name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. The wonderful one, the counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace. Just because you have not known me, that does not distract from who I am. Verse 6, they that may know from the rising of the sun, that's from the eastern country, and from the west, right here in America, that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. If you're looking at my flesh, you got a problem. That means you call a man. That means I have to take you to another part of the book and show you in a minute that man looks at a man from an outward appearance, but Yahweh looks at the mind. So you're going to have to stop looking at my body. If my body confuses you, close your eyes so you can see the true me, the real me. The word is talking to you. Can't you hear it? I form the light and I create darkness. See, those are extreme, like bipolar opposites. That lets you know how incredible I am. I don't just go one way, I am the extremity. I am infinity in all directions. In and out, up and down, all around, forever. I create darkness, then I create light to make darkness sleep. Then I make peace, there seems to be no peace. Then I turn right around and create evil. That's the kind of God I am. I'm the God of opposites. I may seem paradoxical to you, but that's only because you don't know me. If you had known me, you wouldn't be shocked to find out I create light and darkness. Then I create peace and turn around and create evil. I like it like that. I create negative and positive. The negative has to lay down. The positive stands up over negative. Upright. I, the Lord Yahweh, do all these things. So whichever way it seems to you, you had just as well get in tune with Yahweh because you can't do nothing about how he makes things. I make it like I want to. If I kill you, be glad. If I make you alive, be glad. If I make you sick, be glad about me. Because I'm the one that can make you well. Deuteronomy 32, 39. When you learn Yahweh, you'll love him. You'll fear him. Then his rod and staff comfort you. But if you don't know me, you don't know the word, then when something happens, you'd be all bent out of shape. You have no more right to question Yahweh than Job did. Job hung on. He was blessed with twice as much. Hey, y'all, Job is your man. Don't worry, you'll be blessed twice as much. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you glad that you're the one that can stand here tonight and shout? See, I'm a straight father God. I'm the only one that can cause you to shout when you just lost your sister. Because I'm the mighty God. I, I make the father and mother of Joyce that just lost the daughter. But see, they didn't lose them. That's only when you're ignorant and you don't know any better. That's when you're hurt. Yeah, when you don't know Yahweh, then you're hurt. Like, I'll never see him again. If you're going to hell, you may not.
you go in the same place and you're going to see him again. Did it on the 32? 39. See now, not tomorrow. See now that I, even I, am peace. You're looking at me. And there is no God with me. I kill. Now, do you love me or don't love me for it? I kill. And I make a lie. And I told you a moment ago, I will. And I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. What in the world happened to him? Well, let's turn to fear not those that can kill the box. Matthew 10 and 28. Fear not them. Fear 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 not them. Fear them. the body, but them. not able to kill the soul. It's too them. to you. Their body and their soul. Man can take the body, but then he doesn't have power to show. That's what it But rather, fear him. Huh? That's one. Fear him, which is able. Fear him, which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. I'm the one to fear. Y'all are. Fear is out of it. Now we're going to turn to Isaiah again. And say to God. And see that if you receive me. Hmm? Isaiah 5 says. He that has the strength. The Lord has me. Cast up light. And he that hath not the sun of God hath not light. Hmm? Verse 13. These things have I written on you, so they'll be taken away from black and hell. <clears throat> that what? Believe on the name of the Son. I'm the Son. My name is Yahweh the Yahweh. My father's name is Yahweh. Yahweh is the eternal God, created the God of Israel. You to believe in the name of the Son, of Yahweh. That you may know that you have what? Eternal life. Even that you may believe on the name of the Son of Yahweh. So, the fact they believe on my name, and did that? So what do they have? You turn on it? You can't nobody take that. Isn't that comforting? Now let's go to St. John. Chapter 3, verse 36. Oh, this is a blessing. To know. St. John, chapter 3, verse 36. He that believeth on the Son, Yahweh the Yahweh, have everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son, Yahweh the Yahweh, shall not see that. But the Lord of Yahweh abides in him. Then we take the story away from being afraid of the body leaving. See, here's the fact. Every single soul in this building, we made an agreement together, you and I, in Mount Hillel. It says we are on the fire. Verse 3. Read. The Lord Yahweh made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. 
Understand the mystery? Every one of you that's here alive this day, I'm in agreement with you. Not the Father, you. Praise God. Now the Lord just told you, if you don't receive me, you don't believe on my name, that's the only way you're going to be the son. Huh? You're going to lose your life if you don't believe in me. But I'm the reason you're alive. How can you turn your back on the God that made you alive and says you don't live forever? That doesn't make any sense. Hallelujah. So that's my comfort to you. Rest in Yahweh and be glad and know they have everlasting life just like you. We are eternal spirits. How is it a temporary thing? This concludes part seven of Preparing for Rulership.